So, so as the field of 2024 Republican candidates grows, well, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, he was back in Iowa today, fueling more speculation about a possible White House bid. Let's take a look. Senator Scott, if you are potentially considering a 2024 run, what are your thoughts on the RNC potentially requiring a loyalty pledge? Well, the most important thing I can do is to focus on the faith of America tour, because bottom line is, as I hear more from the constituents here in Iowa and around the country, it will give me more information on what to do next. All right, joining us now, Senator Tim Scott. He is in the great state of Iowa. Senator, good to see you. Thank you. If you go to Iowa and then you go to your home state of South Carolina and you end up in New Hampshire, I think the odds are pretty high that you're thinking about a run for the presidency, are you? <laughs> well, today I thought about why I love this country so much. I had a chance this morning, Sean, to visit St. Anthony's Catholic School with Governor Reynolds. She just passed monumental school choice, one of my most important issues I've been fighting on. We had a chance to meet with faith leaders, speak at Drake University, do a radio show, and I just finished with the Polk County GOP. It has been a good day. I'm learning a lot, and as you know, Sean, the most important thing we can do is listen to our bosses, the constituents at home and across the country. All right, so the names that we hear, we know Nikki Haley has uh, thrown her hat in the ring. We know uh, President Trump was the first to announce that he will run again in 2024. But then you hear names like uh, Governor Sununu in New Hampshire, Barry Hogan in Maryland. Uh, you hear names like Ron DeSantis in, in Florida, uh, Glenn Youngkin in, in Virginia, um, and others. Uh, what are the differences in terms of policy positions that, for example, you may have with President Trump? Probably not very many at all. I, I am so thankful that we have President Trump in office. Frankly, the policies that we were able to pass from 2017 to 2020 were monumental. And thank God we went into COVID with a strong economy. We brought the unemployment rates for African Americans, Hispanics, for women, Asians, all to all time lows or the lowest since World War II. We passed Opportunity Zones, the, my signature legislation that brought more than $29 billion back to the poorest communities just in 2019, leading to the lowest level of poverty ever recorded as a country. I think the policies that we fight for as conservatives are the policies necessary to stop the Democrats from ruining America. So might, might we then find ourselves in a position where you know, maybe we'll have six, seven, eight, maybe 10, maybe 20 Republican candidates on a stage that mostly agree on what the governing philosophy and ideology should be for the country, what works for the country. Uh, then where are the differences? What would the differences be, do you think? That's a great question, Sean. I would simply say this, what I'm learning on my Faith in America tour is as I tell my story as an African American who was born into poverty and then a single parent household, the strength of my community, my Chick-fil-A mentor, who happened to be a white guy, a Citadel graduate from in South Carolina, he taught me that you, no matter where you're born, you can rise beyond your circumstances if you're willing to perspire because you're inspired by the American story. Leaning into that helped change my life. Bringing people together, black folks and white folks, not because of the color of our skin, but because we have one single focus. We believe in the goodness of America. I want to share with people why we should be proud of who we are and at the same time debunk the lies of the Progressive Party that's now using race as a weapon in our country in a way that we haven't seen in three or four decades. It is just pitiful.